This is going to be another question and answer video. And if you have any questions about the Bible, you can send them to Hensley Bible Believer at gmail.com. Hensley Bible Believer at gmail.com. Any question you want to ask about the Bible. No question is stupid. Uh, no question is too controversial. Any question you want to ask. But I received a question from someone about the people who are deceived by Satan at the end of the millennium. The question has to do with who makes up the satanic army that's as the sand of the sea at the end of the millennium. The question has to do with will saints be deceived and make up Satan's army at the end of the 1,000 year reign. To get you up to speed about when this actually takes place, first you have the rapture of the church. That's what we're waiting on right now. Then we have the tribulation. Daniel's 70th week, as it's called in the Bible. And then you have the second coming, when Jesus Christ comes down to take over. And then you have the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, a 1,000 year reign. But before this 1,000 years, you'll read in Revelation 20 that Satan is bound. Look at Revelation 21, Revelation 20, verse 1 through 3. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. After that he must be loosed a little season. So for these one thousand years, man can visibly see Jesus Christ, and can't be tempted by the devil. The devil is chained up. Not only this, but man can't even be tempted by unclean spirits or false prophets. Because in Zechariah 13 and verse 2, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So even though you take out the devil, devils, and false prophets, you still have men who will end up rejecting Jesus Christ at the end of the millennium and will join up with Satan. Now you have to remember that the millennium is not eternity. There will still be sin and death in the millennial reign, and not everyone in the millennium is a saint. God is still giving man a choice, as he always has. So who is it that makes the wrong choice and joins up with the devil? Is it the saints? It, who is it? Revelation 20 verse 7 says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay, so we're going to see now who it is who gets deceived. It's the nations. Revelation 20 and verse 8 says, And shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So you see there will be whole nations of people come into the millennium, and they will be in natural bodies. Remember, these people that go into the millennium, these nations of people, and they will continue to have children, and their children will have children, and their children will have children. This will be a large population of people who could easily be considered as the sand of the sea if just half of them join up with Satan. Because remember, the atmosphere goes back to like it was before the flood, most likely, because, you know, you read in Isaiah about how it says the child shall die in hundred years. You know, that's, you know, saying, you know, a hundred years old will be considered a child. People are going to live longer during this time. And if they're living longer, then there's going to be a lot more people because there's not going to be as many dying off. So, you will have enough people to easily be considered as the sand of the sea, an army that big when they join up with the devil, if just half of them joined up with Satan, if less than that. And these people wouldn't be saints. Some of them could have at one time been for Jesus Christ, but when the devil shows up, that changes for some of them. There will be people who didn't probably didn't like how Jesus ran things. They will be more eager to get him off the throne than people are to get Trump out of office today. Uh, but these people aren't the saints. Because if you look at Revelation 20 and verse 9, 
It says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So those who are deceived are not the saints, because that is who they are after, the Lord and his saints. Then Revelation 20 and verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So, it ends pretty quickly. But now look back at verse 6. It says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with them a thousand years. So who was part of the first resurrection? Well, the Old Testament saints, the church age saints, and the tribulation saints. The first resurrection took place in three stages. So it couldn't be any of these people groups because these guys don't suffer the second death. So it's not going to be them. So the only people to make up this army would be the people who most likely are born in the millennium because they still have a choice to accept or reject the Lord. Now, there's not going to be much resistance because, like I said, no false prophets no unclean spirits, and no devil during the 1,000-year reign. So this is going to show the true sinfulness of man's flesh because they're going to reject Jesus Christ. And I believe that they just don't reject him all of a sudden when Satan shows up. I, be, I believe it starts with a process. You know, any time you know, somebody goes against God, it starts with the process of wicked thinking. But that's who I believe I personally don't believe the saints are deceived. Obviously, there's no way in the world it could be any of the saints from the first resurrection. Now, it could possibly be people in the millennium who were at one time for Jesus Christ and then change. Could be that, but they can't be one they can't be, you know, part of that first re anybody from the first resurrection. And I mean, it definitely can't be us, church age saints, because we have eternal security. We're in the body of Christ. We're going to have the mind of Christ. We won't be able to be deceived, you know. You know, like just like you can't deceive the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to have the mind of Christ. You wouldn't be able to deceive us. So there's no way that a saint, especially a church age saint, could be deceived during that time because we're going to have glorified bodies. But I received another question that goes into this because it's something that happens after this event takes place and their question was when will the earth be burned up when will second peter 3 10 through 11 take place is this at the second coming or at the end of the millennium in second peter 3 10 and 11 it says but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? I believe this happens at the end of the millennium, right before the great white throne. You say, but it says the day of the Lord. And you say, so it has to be the second coming. Yeah, but if you go a few verses up to Second Peter 3.8, it says in 2 Peter 3, 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. See, the day of the Lord can cover a thousand years' time, because a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So, the it would cover more than just a second coming. It would cover the 1,000-year reign of, as well. Also, if you look back at Revelation 20, you know, where we talked about the nations being deceived by the devil, and the devil being bound for 1,000 years, and the devil being cast into the lake of fire. And then at the end of Revelation 20, it talks about the great white throne judgment. And then turn to the beginning of chapter 21, and you'll see that there's a new heaven and a new earth. Right after that happens. In Revelation 21, 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So after the great white throne judgment is over, you saw a new heaven and a new earth because that first one had been dissolved right before the great white throne judgment. 
And it looks to me that God lets everything blow up and burn right before the great white throne judgment. Because God's the only thing keeping all this stuff together. But if you look at the end of chapter 20, you'll see about the great white throne judgment. And we'll go back there in a second. But, but now first go back and link all this with 2 Peter chapter 3. I treat it again. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat? Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So I believe, personally myself, that this takes place right before the great white throne. That would be after the millennium, right before the great white throne. And another reason I believe this is because in Revelation 20 and verse 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So the earth and the heaven fled away. They've been dissolved. That's what it looks like to me. At the great white throne, it happens right after the elements melt with fervent heat. It's been dissolved. Now, you know, there's people that say this is referring to the second coming. And, you know, I wouldn't really argue with them because it does get, it does melt. And things do get burned at the second coming. So... You know, I'm not going to argue about it, but that's my personal belief on it. That's when I believe that Second Peter 3, that event in Second Peter 3 takes place. But here, Because here you see the heavens pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And then in Revelation 20 and verse 11, it says, From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, then you turn right over to the next chapter, Revelation 21, and it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. Just like Second Peter 3 talked about a new heaven and a new earth right after talking about the elements being dissolved, pass away, everything passing away with a great noise and the elements she met with fervent heat. So that's my take on it. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not errorless. I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong. But, you know, we're well, we're in this together. If you're a Bible believer, you know, if I'm wrong, just, just correct me. And if you've corrected me, then I'll change my view. You know, this, I do these, you know, this to help people get interested in the Bible. Maybe help some people out along the way. I, I in no way think that I know everything about the Bible or that I have all the answers or that I'm always going to be right. Because everybody's wrong on something somewhere. You know, if we weren't wrong on something somewhere, then we would be God. So, I hope this helped the two people that asked these questions. And if they have any more questions, feel free to send an email. If you have a question about anything, send an email to that Hensley Bible Believer at gmail.com.